care about that. I'm going to drop a link here. You can quickly join the Zoom class because I mean, because we are doing product management, Zoom is always way better than Google Classroom for this experience. I hope that is okay by everybody. Is that okay? Just going to take 30 seconds, you know, nothing. To yes, the recording for this will be available. You will get all the recording. So this is the link. Quickly join the link. Chioma, Biodum, or your just to talk for me, I'll call you to for me a lot. Abdul Samad, you know, please quickly join the link. Um, that is where the class is going to happen every time, at least for my own class. Um, yeah, thank you again. I see people are joining already. Okay. Right, 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 right. Please join, 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 join. As you join, you have to leave this. You have to leave the, what was it called? The Google Meets. You have to leave the Google Meets so that you can be on the Zoom. Don, we're waiting for you. Join. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Uh, I think we're waiting for just four more persons to join. Four more persons. Don, can you please join the Zoom? Oh, are you there? Are you on the Zoom already? um the the essence so i want to quickly walk you through what the learning program looks like you know the entire journey so that we are on the same page in terms of you're welcome to the program sorry about that uh so that you are we're on the same page in terms of the expectation you know we're on the same page in terms of the expectation you understand what the flow really looks like you know and you can use that to adjust you know, your mental framework in terms of like how you should be expecting or what you should be expecting and how you should be learning. Now, the, the good thing with this platform is that I can, or with Zoom is that I can stop people's video because I think the Donald's video is distracting. Okay, so this is the platform that you have to go to almost every time. It's your learning platform. And I'm sure, you know, some of you would have been on this learning platform at one point or the other. Am I correct? You know, some of you would have been on this platform at some point, you know, uh, or maybe that's the real way you even joined the Google Meet. You know, every time you have to come on this platform, every time you have to come on this platform, this is where classes have to happen, right? So this is the way it works. You know, when you're logged in, you would certainly see your product management accelerator program. This is where I need your attention. And for people who have their videos off, please, can you guys put on your video? In my class, you would have to put on your video. Yes, you have to put on your video in my class. So I don't want you guys to be distracted. I want you to have your attention. I need you. Yes, I need you so much. Good. So please, guys, Miriam, please, your video is doing a lot. And mute yourself if you're not the one talking. You know, mute yourself if you're not the one talking. 
I mean, it's quite a very small class, so it should be easy to manage everybody. So as I was saying, this is where the learning actually happens. You know, many of the things happen here. And you're going to have 19 classes, you know, 19 classes. Now, how is the 19 class, how are the 19 classes structured? That's what I want to quickly walk you through. There's a class one, which I'm doing today, which is pretty much introducing you to product management, right? Introducing you to product management, you know, um, where every time you come here, you have to click on, so you have to click on this arrow that, that drops this stuff down. And then you will see live lesson. When you click on live lesson, you click on this button, it takes you to the live class where you meet me, you meet your other trainers. Does that make sense? So please don't be going in the WhatsApp group and say, please send me the link for the class. Nobody will send you the link for the class in the WhatsApp group. Does that make sense? Nobody will do it. You need to go to the class yourself and click on join class. You know. Now, you the class one is pretty much going to be an introduction to product management. From tomorrow, we will now start to go deep dive into what is called design thinking. You know, we start to go deep dive into design thinking, right? So you would have human-centered design, mastery design thinking, testing and validation. Then, you know, you would have another class where everybody will come back together again, not just your class, you know, data analytics, data incubator, everybody come together to come and learn how to optimize, you know, how to leverage LinkedIn you know, for your professional branding, your personal branding, you would have that session, you know, that session is going to happen, you know, so be prepared for that. And then we go again to what is called opportunity discovery. And there will be a learn from your peers where we'll come together as a class and we'll put ourselves into small rooms or small groups and we'll have a peer-to-peer -peer learning session. And when we're done with that, we move to class seven where we're going to be focusing on introduction to product design. That class is pretty much about designing real products. You know, because you now start to use Figma, start to use all those tools to design how to, you know, um, how to, what's the word? How to design real products. And then you have another one where you would have another class on building exciting products. There's going to be a session on CV reviews another session on managing products, you know, development using agile methodology. And the class continues like that, you know. So it's quite a very deep dive, robust class, right? So, but remember that you need to always come on this platform. How do you get on this platform? Every time, just go to learn.utiva.io, every time. Just go to learn.utiva.io. It takes you to your learning platform. If you forget the website again, just go to utiva.io, which is our website, and then click on the button here that says login. And then it will log you on into the major classroom. Does that make any sense, everybody? Does that make any sense? Okay. I hope that I hope you understand that, right? Before we get started. Does that make sense, guys? Any question on that? Yes. Okay, thank you, Ada. Now, today we are pretty much going to be doing a quick introduction to product management. And then I would also be doing what is called an introduction to design thinking. You see, the entirety of product management is a very robust body of knowledge. We all get into product management from, from different paths. In fact, there are more accidental product managers than career product managers themselves. You know, many of us get into product management accidentally. You know, usually people don't get into product management because they, um, you know, they chose product management as an undergrad or they did a master's on product management. You know, usually we all get into product management accidentally. I mean, my own journey into product management was very funny, right? Very interesting. Um, in 2013, I had a mentor who had come back to the to Nigeria from the US, who had told me about the technology industry. Then the best of technology industry was with uh, the guys like Visa, Verve, MasterCard in Nigeria, InterSwitch, Inlax, Remita, which was, uh, was, was the name then, um, you know, 
there were not many, technology was not very exciting and interesting in 2013 in Nigeria. You know, technology wasn't very exciting and there was no Andela, there was no Flutterwave, there was no Paystack, there was, there was literally nothing really. You know, the tech industry was just starting in 2012, you know, in Nigeria. And then a mentor just came from the US and told me about the tech industry. And then I wanted to go into public health. You know, I wanted to do public health. You know, I wanted to work with WHO and all those guys, kind of guys. And then my mentor told me about tech, said, you know what, Italian tech is a big thing. You know, you know, tech is booming, da, 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 go into tech. I was not exactly sure I, I would go into tech. So I went to do project management, right? Which is different from product management. I went to do product management. And then, you know, around that time, when I did product management, one of my mentors just got a job with, sorry, just got a project with CBN, right? His role was to build a technology infrastructure, a cloud infrastructure. So I was supporting him. And around that time, we're not using agile product management or methodology. We're using the waterfall approach. You know, I will get there. I will explain the difference between the two. You'd understand. But it was just very interesting that we were building technology products. We were building softwares. We were building technology products. We had engineers, you know, we had developers, we had cloud infrastructure guys, we had IT guys from abroad, you know, that were coming around to build technology products for us. So in 2014, I started my first company, which was pretty much, you know, an aggregator of different software developers, helping different companies to build their software products. You know, that was in 2014. And then I got lucky in 2015, which was really luck. Um, in 2015, I was trying to pull the email out. In 2015, I got lucky. I was invited to the U.S. to join an organization, you know, in the U.S. as a fellow. You know, they did not call the role product management. They called it client. Um, I'm going to look at the. I'm going to look for the role. Again. You know, I look for it so that I can share with you. And I'm trying to just share, you know, my journey so that you can also understand how people get into product management. You know, so they had built a technology software, a technology product then, and they wanted someone who was going to do client management, you know. Uh, so sometimes the clients have like problem with the platform. You know, they were looking for someone who would just sit down with the client and help the client fix the problem. Sometimes the clients want to um, bought 500 users. They're looking for someone who's going to help the client on board 500 users. Sometimes the product is slow. You know, things are not working. Maybe there are bugs. They're looking for someone who is going to talk to the developers, talk to the engineers and say, hey, engineers, the product is slow. The website is down. You know, that's kind of like they were looking for someone who is going to like manage the entire thing. Does that, does that make sense to you? They were just looking for someone who just kind of like manage the entire thing. And this was in 2015. You know, and I was excited about that. I didn't know that there was something called product management then. You know, I didn't know that it was product management. I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to go do it. You know, and then I remember 2015, I was super excited about it. You know, this was the email I got from them. You know, 2015. Hey, Tayo, you know, you've been selected for Atlas Core Fellowship. You know, you're going to be in the U.S. Uh, working with a host organization called, you know, Creative Associates, you know. But the role they gave me, uh, what was the role called again? Yes, this is the job description. You know, it was called Client Support and Partnership Fellow. That was the role. But if you read the job description, I hope you guys are following me. You know, for you guys that have your videos off, eh? Yes. Okay, good. If you read the job description, you would see here, it said the Creative You Client Support Fellow will provide support to a variety of internal and external clients using the iteration of the Creative You e-learning platform to promote active use of the course, community of practice, resource libraries, da 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 they would also work to build new content partnerships to generate additional modules and resources. Da, 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 da. And that was literally what I was doing. But in January 2000, sorry, February 2016, 
right? Something happened. Our platform was down. You know, our technology platform was down and I had to start to engage with the developers, you know, start to engage with the engineers and our engineers were, were in Egypt then. I was in the US, they were in Egypt. We had two different time, you know, zones, but I was engaging with them. My direct boss left in 2016. That was around um, June, July. A new boss came in from Microsoft and he told me that, he said, what are you doing? You know, why, why, is your, why was your role called client support? This is product management. You're managing a product. You know, although already built technology platform, but you are managing the engineers, you're managing the developers, you're managing the designers, you're managing the clients, you're managing all the stakeholders, you're, build, you're rebuilding the product, you're taking the products to new markets, you're creating new content, you're revamping the business model. This is what product managers do. This is what product managers do. And he told me about it. So I had to go to the HR guys and I had to renegotiate guys. My title is demeaning. I'm actually a product, I'm actually doing the product management role. They did a review after two months. They sent me an email that my title has been changed to product management. And then they gave me a new little you offer. Miriam, if you're not mute yourself, guys, mute yourselves. So that was how my journey really started into product management. And between then, I've really, really, you know, loved the product management space. But remember that we are talking about technology product. That is what we are talking about. Technology products. Tech product is what we are actually talking about here. So many of you are in this class, you're going to be leaving this program, you know, to become product managers, da -da -da -da, to do whatever you want to do with your career. But the interest thing with product management is that today in the tech industry today product management is one of the biggest opportunities out there in the tech industry why because everyone is building technology products you know and when they're building technology products it is the job of the product managers to help ensure that this product can built okay so um you, you many of you will find yourself in product management and you would love it. You know, you would love it as, as we move on into the space. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is this. Product management has multiple phases or multiple, you know, multiple components. There's a part of product management that is called design thinking, right? There's a part of product management that is called design thinking. There's a part of product management that is called product design. Another part is called agile execution. Another one is called integrated product leadership. And another one is called product strategy. You see, all this different element of product management, you must be good. You must really know all this different element of product management. I will take them again. There's a part of product management that is called design thinking, right? Now, the reason I love Zoom is that Zoom allows me to put you guys into a different breakout room. There's a part of product management that is called design thinking. Another one is called product design, you know, design thinking, product design. Another one is called integrated leadership. Another one is called Agile Execution. Integrated Leadership, Agile Execution, Product Strategy, Product Strategy, right? Product Strategy. Now, all of these are different components of product management. But today, we will be starting with the first one, which is called Design Thinking. Design Thinking. You know, that's what we're going to be starting with today. Design thinking is what we are starting with today. Design thinking is the basics of every product management. In fact, there is no product management without design thinking. You know, and that's what we are starting with today. Okay. Um, I want to be sure that you guys are still with me, Ekman. 
Miriam, Renita. Yes, I'm here. Where are you guys? Where are you guys? Don't oh, be distracted. I'm here. I'm here. Don't be in the kitchen. Avoid the temptation of trying to multitask. Don't multitask. Avoid that temptation. You see, design thinking is the foundation of product management. You know, just the same way you say you can't build a house without, you know, the foundation. Design thinking is the foundation of product management. But before I move into design thinking, let me lay some background. What do product managers do? Anybody who knows. What do product managers do? I'll start to call your name anyways. Um, Moyo, what do you think product managers do? Well, they manage products. Um, from as I think maybe as a, as a product designer is designing, of course, you tell them maybe what the customers want and what the maybe CEO what the boss wants. Um, so you are going to I think integrate the whole process from the design to the execution to when to the launch of the product also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, Miriam, what do product managers do? What do we do as product managers? What's our job? Miriam. Okay. Uh, can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you. Um, product manager manage products and okay. The C to my own understanding, the CEO of the product will tell the product manager what he or she wants. Then the product manager will have to make research in the market mm -hmm. to see what the mm -hmm. end users will be satisfied about the product mm -hmm. and also compare the product with every similar product. Also speak to the marketing um, department on what to market on the product, speak to the designers on what to create in the app or whatsoever. That's, yeah. that's my whole idea about product management. Thank you, Miriam. Bakri, is it Bakri or Bakri? Is it Bakri? What do product managers do? Bakri, are you there? Yeah, so it's about your me. It's about your me. I'm trying okay, to. About your, please, guys, change your name to your yeah, names so sure. that it's easy. Bakri, uh, about your me, sorry. Yeah, sure. I'm good at that. Product okay. managers do. Yeah, so to so the best of my knowledge, right, um, product managers are more or less like the, um, I mean, are more or less like the, um, let me say, I mean, someone that is res responsible for ensuring that the product comes together. And of course, mm -hmm. the um, the company at the end of the day should be able to monetize. I mean, what I mean monetization is to be able to get a value out of that product. Yeah, so a product manager is the one that is in charge of, I mean, doing that. Um, yeah, yeah, so that's my basic understanding about being a product manager. Yes, okay. No, so, so I mean, you guys are absolutely correct. Absolutely. You know, the role of a product manager is a very exciting one. You know, sometimes all you have is an idea, right? And you're looking for someone who is going to be the product manager, right? The product manager steps in and takes it from the ideation to launch. You know, takes it from ideation to launch. Right. All the things that the product managers need to do from ideation to launch that the things we're going to learn. Sometimes, you know, it's not just an idea. It's beyond an idea. You know, sometimes it's a problem that does not even have an idea that you how you're going to solve it. You know, but the product manager is the one who steps in and ensures that the product is built. The product is taken to the market and the product is successful in the market. You know, the product manager, unlike a project manager who just builds something or who just creates something and is not responsible for the post creation or the afterlife of that thing, a product manager is responsible for the entire life cycle. Does that make any sense? The product manager ensures, right, that the idea that we are working, the problem we are working on, let's even, let's even take some step back. 
The product manager ensures that the, I, the problem we are working on is worth it. You know, some problems are not worth it. You know, some problems will not become a multi-billion dollar problem. You know, so the, prog- the product manager ensures that the problem is actually even worth it. The product manager ensures that the idea or the potential solution is the right solution. Because sometimes you have the wrong solution for the right problem. Who knows any product in Nigeria who is a wrong solution to a right problem? Anybody knows? In my class, you would have to start to know. Who has ever used a solution called a bag? A bag app. Yeah, I think I've. Yeah, I think I'm ahead of what it. Okay, you be the judge. You be the judge. I don't want to be the judge. The goal of a beg app is to get support where you need it quickly from someone. I am in Nigeria. I be Oslan now. Abdul Samad is my guy. The guy the US. Right? I need 10,000 Naira from Abdul Samad. The guy with the US. I'm in Nigeria. Right? And then... I have a big app. I am the one that need the money. I need a, I, I need a big app. But for Abdul Samad to send me money, right? They are asking him to download a big app. Does that make sense to you guys? You know, do you want to download an app to send someone's money? Someone who is actually begging for something. You need to download an <laughs> app. <laughs> To download it. I mean, it, you remember that there is the there's the African, is it the, it's called the black tax, right? There's the black tax. The black tax, we all pay it, especially for some of you that are abroad. You know, you have to pay it, like send money home to your parents, do the data, all those things. You can download an app for that. You understand? But for, to, for someone who is begging for something to help you, I get to download an app. It's not going to be possible. I won't download any. Any app. If I could add it up to help you, it has to be as simple as you know, the money needs to go from my account a very simple way because you you know the way we help people, right? You're about to help someone. If you see any little barrier like this in your way of helping someone, you say maybe God doesn't want to help this guy tell no. You know, tell you could keep my money. Yes. I mean, that's the way my brain works, for example. You know, you are begging me for 50K. I've, to, I've posted you for, for since last month. So I've, tell, I've told you, I will send the money. Don't worry. Huh? I've been busy. You see, when it comes to helping people, we all busy. We all get busy. We all will say, ah, man, I've been seeing your message. We've just been busy. At the point of sending the money, there's now an internet problem. What would happen? You'll get busier. That's why PayPal is easier. You know, you, when, you, when you're thinking about a solution to a problem, right? In product management, you want to make sure that number one, the problem is even worth solving in the first place. The second way is that you want to make sure that beyond just worth solving, the solution is the easiest way to solve the problem, right? And then your job is not finished as a product manager, then the business side of the products you know, the right pricing, the right business model. You have to ensure that there's a right business model, there's a right pricing. Otherwise, you get out of business. You know, Piggy Vest, imagine Piggy Vest says, pay $50, pay $50 per month to save on Piggy Vest. That will be our excuse. You know, that will be our excuse. Nobody will want to use it. You know, so the right business model, the right price and strategy is your problem as a product manager. That's one of the things you need to solve. You know, the team from the product designer to the developer, to the product marketer, to the user researcher, to the user researcher or the user experience researcher, all the guys that are working with you, the data scientists, everybody is your problem. You need to work with them, right? As a product manager, right? 
But then remember that you are a product manager. There's another part which is called the strategy side of the work that you're doing. The strategy side. What are we building today? What are we going to build in the next five years? Let me give you a very interesting example. A very interesting example. Today, your product, my classes, this class is going to be a whole lot of very interesting one because I don't like when half of the class video is off. I usually have a struggle with it, you know, because this is not a radio station. This is supposed to be a live class. So I want to be seeing all this Rafiat, Donald, Miriam, Bakri, um, Chinelo, Ruth, all of you, Ada, Okun, all of you guys that you have your videos off. Are you in this class at all? Tell you, I'm oh, here. Yeah. It's 5 a.m. over here. I'm here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. For, for those that are for those that are for those that are very early, you can I can excuse you. But for Thanks those that are, for some of you that it's 11 a.m. Put on your video. It's 11. It's not 5 a.m. where you are. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, you are not, uh, uh, yes, I can see. You see, there's a temptation when your video is off. Something will just distract you a little bit. When your video is on and you are with me like this, you can't be distracted. You just say, let me quickly check my WhatsApp. No, no, no. I don't want you to check your WhatsApp. You know, WhatsApp is a very big temptation. You know, so there's a strategy side of product management. When I say strategy side of product management, what am I talking about? You know, the leadership team, the stakeholders, the investors, what are we building today? What are we going to build in the future? You know, what are we building today? What are we going to build in the future? Do you understand? It's something that is called the product roadmap in product management. You know, product roadmap really needs to talk to you about what are we building in the future? What will the product evolve into? You know, Flutterwave is not just a payment gateway, right? Have you guys seen it? You know, Although it looks to you like flood, who knows flutter with here, right? I mean, you all should know flutter with. If you don't know flutter with, then you're not ready to come into tech. Flutter with is ABC of tech. You know, if you notice, if you check flutter with's website, let me quickly show you. Flutter with is already launching new products for the future. That means that the product manager needs to really understand what is the product today and what is the product in the future. Because your job as the product manager is to think strategy using product roadmap. That's your job, to think strategy, you know, using product roadmap. So if you look at Flutterwave now, you see they started with payments, collecting payments, sending money. That's what they started with. Now they are pivoting into stores, commerce. You know, you see they're launching what is called stores. Now they're pivoting into what is called capital you know, where they can provide you with quick, flexible loans. You understand? You see, it's coming soon. That means that the tech product team is building this already. You see, they are coming up with what's called Grow, right? Grow. So with on Flutterwave, you can register and incorporate your business everywhere. You see how they are launching new products, right? They have what is called FAS. You know, do you understand what I'm saying? So they're launching new products. The product manager needs to have strategy in mind. You need to be thinking the next five years, what will this product actually evolve into? You know, what will it evolve into? And that's how product managers think. This class, let's move straight into design thinking. If you have questions, please raise up your hand. I'll be happy. To quickly talk about the one we say design thinking, what are we talking about? Two things design thinking, design thinking. It's the way the design thinking is what should guide the way you think about what your product eventually becomes, right? Why is design thinking very important, right? Number one is this this class is about design thinking, right? Remember, this class is about design thinking. Everything you're going to be learning is about design thinking. Now, what will you be learning? Number one is that I want to introduce you to a new discipline 
that helps you to build innovative product fast in such a way that they are sustainable. So three things, right? The product has to be innovative. By innovation, I mean creating value, value creation, a product that creates value, right? That is built fast, right? And is sustainable. By sustainability here, we mean in terms of the business model, it's sustainable. The product is addressing the right markets and the market is giving return value back for the product. So three major things. Number one, value creation. Number two, speed. Number three, sustainability. Now, and we during this design thinking training, we are also going to be learning how to collaborate, you know, among ourselves, right? So that as we become product managers, we now take that capacity into our team and, you know, collaborate and build a collaborative team. How do you create hypotheses? How do you collect and analyze data? How do you get feedback, you know, on products that you have built? These are all the things that you're going to be learning in product management. And then we are going to be, you also be learning how to translate, you know, opportunities into products. You know, how to translate opportunities into products. Now, the entire concept of design thinking is just defined in this entire diagram that you have here. So take your time and look at this diagram. Look at this diagram here. I'm going to grab coffee for myself. Look at this diagram, everybody. Now, if you look at this diagram well, you would find that it looks like it's a journey that is described in three things. Number one, understanding, exploring, materializing. You know, first, you need to understand what you are building or what the situation is or what the customers or who the customers are. So the first stage is the stage where we just broadly define it as understanding. Then there's another second stage, which is now where you explore. And then you, it now, you now start to create, it starts to materialize. But in this, we have the first stage of design thinking is empathize, define, ideate, prototype, test, implement. Let me show you a much more interesting diagram, you know, sorry. Okay, I think I will get that. You know, the entire process of design thinking is in number one, empathize, define, ideas, prototype, test, and implement. These are the six processes of design thinking. Let's quickly look at what does this really mean in real life. I'm building a technology product right now, right? Let me tell you the problem that I'm trying to solve. And you tell me if the problem is worth solving. I decided to move out of Nigeria finally, finally, finally out of Nigeria at the age of 30. You know, my name is Ayutaya. Before I moved out of Nigeria, I was already doing well in my own country, Nigeria. Already got it here, you know. I had a house built by myself. I had two cars. I had a company. We had 25 staff members. I was doing well. Nigeria was just frustrating, you know. And I said, you know what? Let me just pack my bag and leave. And leave these people for themselves. You know, so that I don't, I don't die in this trouble. Now, when I got into the UK, the first thing they told me was that um, I need to have, you know, something called credit score to be able to buy things and pay later. You know, it was really a struggle for me. You know, I'd lived 30 years of my life in Nigeria. Now, I moved to a new country. I don't have a credit score. I have to start building the credit score. Now, remember, I have money. I have money. You know, in fact, when I moved into the UK, hypothetically, I moved with a hundred million naira. But yet, I don't have a credit score. 
So I just thought, wouldn't it be interesting to help immigrants, not just Nigerians that are moving abroad, Ghanaians, Zambians, Kenyans, you know, um, Palest Palestinians, Pakistanis, Chinese, you know, everybody that's moving from one country to another country to be able to transfer their credit score from their own countries to their new country that they are moving to. You know, that's the problem I want to solve. What they are saying in design thinking is this. There are six processes I must go through in design thinking. The first process is this. I need to empathize. What does empathizing mean? I need to conduct research to develop an understanding of who the users are. That's the first process. You know, remember the word empathize actually means to put yourself in another person's shoes. Am I correct? You know, so you need to develop a very conductive, very deep dive research to understand who the users are. Right? That's the first thing. The second thing you need to do is that you need to now combine all the researches that you have conducted. You know, all the researches that you have conducted. You need to now combine them all to now say, what is the problem exactly that I'm solving? Or which of the problems am I solving? Who can tell me this, this, this um, situation I've, I've explained now? Who can tell me the different problems that you think I am going to be and solving? What are the different problems that you can that you hear from this example I've given? Chinelo, you're on this up. Oh, that's so fast. Uh, yeah, I would say that's an amazing one because one is you're helping people settle in. So transferring those credit cards, because if you watch folks that grew up abroad, you'll find out that before the age of 30, yeah, some of them have very amazing credit scores, right? So I think it's a very wonderful one. It's going to help migrants settle in fast. That's the number one. Number two is also in case they want to buy things like they want to buy houses and all, the credit score is going to help them. So I, I believe it's a faster way for migrants to settle in. So I believe the product is going to solve a very big problems. Yeah, absolutely. But now we need to now say, what are the different problems? I mean, I'm not, you might not really be able to give me the answer because we have not gotten into the defined phase. But if you listen to the explanation, you'll be able to pin out some problems. What are the problems that we are solving? Who else wants to go? Who else to go? What are the problems? I mean, Chinalu has said, the product is amazing. This is good. It's going to help migrants settle in fast. Da -da -da -da. Bakri, change your name now. I'm struggling with your name now. Bakri, go ahead. Okay, um, sorry about that. What was the name again? Abayomi. 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 Yeah. Go um, So, um, I think one of the major problems that is going to be solved is, I mean, um, for people that comes into the country, namely, they can have access to, I mean, they can have access to maybe like credit, to buy things on credit. No, wait. That is the value that we are offering, right? What problem? Are we trying to solve? Tough, right? Moyo, Harvey. Okay. Good. Good morning again. Um, I think, for example, in a place like Africa, as you mentioned, um, they don't have. I don't think they have credit scores in many Number countries. One. And um, you will not be developing a universal credit score for all countries, if possible. Thank you. That is that possible? We are going there. So Moyo is saying the first element of the problem is building a universal credit score system for Africa or for other countries. Number one problem. Good. Abi. I know Moyo would have more, but I had to quickly cut him because I don't want him to give us more so that others can give us more problems. Problems are good. Abi, okay. go ahead. Yeah, so what comes to my mind is so you, the question you ask specifically is um, what exactly is the problem, right? So to answer that, what really comes to my mind is um, I just have a one-liner sentence, which is um, I cannot rent a house. 
That's mm -hmm. because if you, because because that's what you are asking me. What problem specifically? What exactly is the problem? So my number one problem that comes to my mind is I cannot rent a house. Mm, no, this is it, right? Okay. You've spoken with users. Yes. You've spoken with users. At the end of the conversation with users, the problem, there are multiple elements of the problem, right? You as a, you as a product manager, you now have different problems that your product can solve. You're wondering which of these problems am I even starting with, right? From this conversation that we've had, what are the different elements of problems that you think that, you know, you have to solve, you know, or your product would have to solve? And which one do you want to even give preference to? You know, Abdul Samad. Yes, thank, thank you very much. Okay. I think it's okay if you don't. Sorry, Abdul Samad. I mean, it's okay if, you, we, if we don't still know this yet because we will get to define stage when we now start to have very provocative conversation. Yeah, Abdul Samad, go ahead. Yes, I think the first element of what, from what I gathered from your information was the estimation and the transfer of the credit score. So yeah, in Nigeria, you don't even, there's nothing like credit score or you need to now, you know, measure that to now transfer to UK. I think yes, that's the, the, the first problem that you're, yeah. you're asking. Now, Zama, what Abdul Samad is saying is that we need to even build an algorithm, right? That can help us to even analyze people's, you know, um, credit transactions and then create a score from that algorithm, right? So there is no one standard you know, system that analyzes everybody's score and say, you are on 586, you are on 571. There is nothing that exists in Nigeria. Every one of us was like that. Okay, sleeping and waking up like that, you know. And then he's saying that that score, once you now create an algorithm from your countries or from this country, and it becomes acceptable, we need to be acceptable abroad. So you now, not to, you now need to start to have conversations with the global economies, you know, about accepting the score that we accept from home country. That's another big problem that we also need to solve, you know. So problems are existing or problems exist at different levels. What other problems are we solving? The bio, your hand is still up. Okay, good. Let me give us a very interesting uh, other example. When I need to get things done in Nigeria, you know, let's say um, I just need someone who's going to wash my car. You know, usually what I do is to call that boy or that Malan who is my, you know, who is my gate man or who is very close to my house and tell him to wash my car for me. And I would settle him, give him a, a petty cash or something breaks down at home. Uh, my gas cooker breaks down, my refrigerator breaks down, you know, things just happen. Or sometimes I'm just, I just wait, I went to the club yesterday, I get back home, I can't just do anything on Saturday morning, I'm very tired, I need someone to just clean the entire home for me. Or it becomes a little bit more complicated than that. So maybe I need someone, you know, to help me fix my car, you know, the car breaks down at home, I need someone to help me fix my car. Usually when you have a major problem like that, what we all do is to put it on our WhatsApp status, right? And say, do you know anybody who can help me do this thing? Sometimes for someone like me, when I was in Nigeria, I don't cook. You know, um, I always have so always have to look for someone to come around and do the cooking, you know. Uh, so imagine I on a Saturday morning, Nifemi is the lady I always call to come and cook for me. She says she's not available because she needs to go see her grandma. What I will go next is I will go on my WhatsApp status and say, do you know any very nice cook that can come over the weekend and cook for me? But I am thinking of a way, a much more better way that technology can help us find the closest person to us who can do things for, who can do things for us. You know, so just to for me, are you in Nigeria? Um, no, I'm not. Okay, anybody in Nigeria here? Chinelo, um... Please change your names, guys. Who is iPhone? <laughs> Who is that? So, Moyo, you're in Nigeria, right? 
Yeah, where in Nigeria are you? Lagos. Lagos, good. So let's say your car breaks down in the early morning, you know, seven o'clock, you want to go out, the car breaks down or the tire just goes down. You need someone who can quickly, or the TV, or the TV just starts giving you attitude. You know, you need something to help you quickly fix someone, something. I'm just trying to build a technology platform, you know, an app that can help you say, hey, I need to fix my TV and get you someone closest to you who can come and do it for you. What are the problems that you're really solving with that? What are the problems that are involved in that kind of, in this kind of, you know, solution I've just explained? I'm sorry, um, I don't really get the question. Are you saying um, as you, in Nigeria, as you find the problems relate, related to that? So what, can, what problem will that mobile hack be solving? Okay. Um, you'll be connecting maybe all artisans or that's, people together. That's, okay. that's, what, that's the value you're offering. Say it in form of a problem, a problem statement. What is the problem that you are solving? What customer's pain points are you solving? Bringing everybody to a central place for artisans. No. That's not similar. No. Ease. Convenience. That's one. What other problem are you solving? Somebody's asking if there's a platform already. Chinelo. There is none. No. Probably security. You see people. Security, Moyo. Thank you. Two. These are all the things you need to solve. These are the problems you need to solve. Chinelo, your hand is up. Okwala, your hand is up. Tofumi, your hand is up. Speed. Chinelo, speed. Because you don't want to call someone and fix a car for you and the person comes next week. You know, speed. Can the person really come immediately? Speed. You know. Okay. Tofumi. Yeah, what I, what I feel is um, there would also be like reviews based on what someone has done you can actually check for reviews okay this if you need someone to fix your car you have a list of options based on the reviews this is like the top three people that are best for the job yeah but what problem is that what problem are you solving with that um i would say quality of service huh? quality of service thank you these are all the problems you're solving so the idea of Quality, thank you. Accountability, you know, competence. You need to evaluate it, but you need to be sure of the person's competence, you know. Now, the idea of design thinking, right, is to help you build the product in such a way that all these problems are built, uh, sorry, the solutions to those problems are built into the products. The first part of design thinking is empathizing, where you're conducting your research to understand the users because you want to understand the users. The second part is defining to ensure that all the re researches you have gathered help you to understand the problem. You need to understand the problem. You know, you need to understand the problem. The first challenge when people are building technology products is this. People always rush into what they want to build you know, and they spend less time, you know, understanding who the customers are and what are the customers' problem. Do you understand what I'm saying? They rush into building the technology product itself without knowing who the customers are. How are these customers? How do they live? How do they exist? Who are they? You know, who are these customers? How do they exist? Because you need to know. If you don't know, you'll be building a technology product for yourself and you are not the customers. You're not the customer. You know, you're not the customer. In 2018, you know, I was just really frustrated. I wanted to build something that was really going to be like a money moving machine. You know, because all this education on training people, helping people to learn book and become better in life does not make money. You know, the worst you will make in a year, this is too small. You know, the, when you talk about businesses that make money, you talk about businesses like, you know, Niger Bet, Naira Bet, Bet King, 
those ones, you know, they make money, football business makes money. You talk of business. So I, 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 so I was looking for a business that, number one, addiction, you know, it's, it's addictive. Book is not addictive. All of you now, you're already tired of, see, ask you, are you not tired of this class already? You're already in your mind thinking, when is this class going to end, John? Let me go and sleep, you know. When is this class going to end? My friend is coming over. It's Saturday. Learning is not addictive, you know, but betting is addictive. You know, I wanted to start a business that is very fast moving, you know, business. So I thought of starting a dating site, you know, in 2017, 2018. I thought of starting a dating site. So I committed two months to talking to customers, two months talking to potential customers, two months. You know, I was everywhere. I was in Nigeria. I was everywhere having conversation with people, you know, just talking to people. It was revealing. It was really, really revealing. Number one, it's if I had built that business, I would have been a multi-billionaire by now. You know, because they were not asking for a dating site. They were asking for something totally different. Something totally different, which was going to be a fast moving money, a, a fast money moving, you know, your platform. But I didn't want to associate my personal brand with that kind of you know, product. So you have to take a step back. You need to have conversations with real customers. You need to talk to real customers. And then you now come to ideation. Ideation, the ideation stage is when you now start to say, what are we building? What product are we building itself? You know, prototype is when we now begin to build the product and then we move on from there. Okay. Uh, is Jessica in the room? Oh, she's not. Okay. I just want to know when we're going to have a break. So by 11.45, we'll be going for our first break. Please, if your hand is still up, are you trying to ask a question? Because I see your DJ and Moyo's hand up. Like, do you guys have your hands up? Just want to be sure that your hands are not up by mistake. Okay. So um, when we say design thinking, right? Sorry. Can you still see my screen? My check. Can you guys see my screen, please? No. no. Oh, okay. 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 Give me a minute. Thank you. So when we say design thinking, what are we talking about, guys? You know, number one is this not knowing the exact problem we want to solve is a major problem. You know, when you're building a technology product, people don't even know the exact problem. They know what they want to build, but they don't know the exact problem that that thing is solving. When I say exact problem now, you need to be able to break it down and say, is it a problem of convenience? Is it a problem of payment? Is it a problem of you know, speed? Is it a problem of credibility? Is it accountability? You know, not just coming to my house to say you want to fix something, but fixing it the right way. You know, accountability, credibility, making sure that the person that it's even being paired with me is the right person that can fix the problem. You know, so competence, capability, you know, these are all the problems that you really want to solve in the solution. You know, number two is that no clear understanding of the user that you're solving for. That's another thing that we also face. Another one is not understanding the limit of technology because technology cannot do everything. So you need to be able to know if you can actually build the algorithm that you say you want to build. You know, not just saying, oh, we want to build a credit score and then there's a limit to technology. Can the credit score, can the algorithm actually be built? That's another thing that you need to talk about, you know. No, so not understanding the environment in which our planned solutions will exist. If you say you want to build credit score for people in Nigeria, how many people here take credits? How many of you on this call take loan? Raise up your hand. Let's see. I buy one. How many people here take loan? Ekpen, two. 
Okay, let's expand it a little bit. How many people are interested in buying now and paying later? How many people? Buy now, pay later. Ekman, and buy on me. Just to talk for me. How many people? You know, have those amount. So it's that Nigeria really does not have the culture of buying now and paying later. You understand? So you can say you want to build something that is sexy, that is interesting, that is exciting, that, 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 that oh, we're building an algorithm that helps people to, that, to transfer their credit score. You are just speaking English. You know, Nigerians don't have the culture yet of buying now and paying later. But if you had asked before building Piggy Vest, how many people save? You say almost everybody will tell you they save. Because there was already existing a piggy bank almost in every I mean, literally everybody on this call grew up with a piggy bank. Am I correct? You had a small piggy, piggy bank. You know, Miriam, have you forgotten those days when we are doing uh, Ilea? And then they would, uh, then your mom would say, go and give rice to uh, to um, uh, Elijah Mutiat. And you go and give rice and the woman will give you money. Where do you always keep the money? You know, we all had somewhere in our bag, in our, under our pillow, our parents even kept money under their pillows. Our parents had some, my mom used to have, you know, on, uh, in, on a wrapper, she would just have one very interesting angle. She would tie the money there and lock it up. You know, that is spiritual. You don't unlock it. If you unlock that kind of money, <laughs> that's when the money is locked, you know, in that the edge of the cloth and they tie it. That is spiritual. You don't unlock it. You know, so every so there's already an existing culture. You are only building technology on that culture. Do you understand? A problem is when you build a technology and then there's no culture, there's no habits. You are only building a technology on something that does not exist. Which one do you think enables scale faster? You know, when the habit and culture already exist and you are building a technology on it, it grows fast because there's already an attitude. There's already a habit, you know, around it. So the problem that we face when we are building technology products is that, number one, you're, there's no enabling environment, you know, to help you to drive the problem, the product at scale. And then sometimes no clear business, you know, model or business solution for the problem and for the products. There's no clear business model or business solution for the problem and for the product that you're building. That's another problem that we face when we are building technology products, right? So um, how can design thinking really help us? Design thinking is not a one-way approach. You know, it's an iterative process that helps us to understand our customers, our users. It helps us to challenge our assumptions. You know, like I told you about the dating hub that I wanted to build. My initial assumption was that, oh, you know what? I had friends. I mean, I was, this was 2017. I was pretty much younger than these. I had friends that were very, very busy. They were busy building their lives. You know, I thought people were really, really busy. And they would have, they would need a dating hub that can help them, you know, to meet people online and dates. That was what I wanted to build. When I started talking to potential users, I realized that they were not interested in dating. It was not dating that was their problem. At least the people that I spoke with were not interested in dating. So people would tell me something like, hey, Tayo, you know, so on a Friday night, never want to go to the club and I use the hub. Let's quickly find a baby that also wants to go to the club around me. You know, it's like, whoa. And then people were telling me the truth. You think if I want to date, I don't have somebody I can date. You know, I could go to church and there are sisters in church. People already have solutions to their problem. You know, there were people were telling me there was Facebook. You know, we, grew, we all grew up with to go. You don't used to go in this room. Good. You know, so in Africa, it looks like our own life is different from this Oyimbo people. You know, it's like dating is not our own problem. Our own problem is people were looking for something that will fuel their evil, their wickedness, you know, the evil they want to commit. 
that was what people were interested in. When I started having conversation with my friends, the guys, people were telling me, you retire. So if the babe agrees now eh, that she's going to the club with me, can I negotiate with her? So she will know that she's collecting 40,000 naira. Can I pay? So that we agree. You know, we agree on the app. People were telling, in fact, one of my friends, Chico, told me that sometimes you get to the club. It's when you get to the club and then you have done, you are done with your friends. You're not looking for a babe. Can we use the app to find the nearest babe in the club that also wants to go? Customers are saying something totally different. I had an assumption that people were looking for a decent platform that would fill their decency. I didn't know that people were, people don't have, people have abandoned their decency, you know, and then they wanted to fill something else. And that's how we make wrong assumptions when we're trying to build technology products. You know, you just assume that, oh, people want to use this app or people will use the app. I mean, I know that you want people to use it, but then you need to put yourself in the customer's shoes and really understand what the customers want. So design thinking helps us to understand users, challenge our assumptions, you know, redefine the problem, right? Redefine the problem. And when the problem is redefined, dude, there's now a quick way to solving that problem. You know, in, there's now a quick way to solve the problem. You know what I wanted to build then was a mobile app that helps. Let's say Abdul Samad is in Nigeria, right? Abdul Samad lives in Lagos. Um, I know you live in Kaduna, am I correct? You know, let's say Abdul Samad lives in Lagos. Abdul Samad is very busy, a product manager. Let's even say Kaduna, a product manager in Kaduna, working with one of the biggest financial technology company, you know, nine, not nine to five, it's six to six, you know, and then he's just extremely busy. Abdul Samad can connect. That's what I wanted to build. Abdul Samad can connect his, you know, that dating app to his LinkedIn profile. You see how my, my assumption you know, to his LinkedIn profile and then extract some professional information from the LinkedIn profile, put it on the platform. And then Miriam, who is also single, living in the same environment. Miriam is interested in someone in financial technology. Abu Samad is in financial technology. You know, Miriam lives in, you know, um, Bordeaux in Kaduna. Abu Samad lives in, you know, Fa Fanan in Kaduna. They live very... They, uh, those places don't exist. So don't go and say it. I said, I'm just making names up. They leave, you know, and then they can connect. But when we started talking to Jesu Tofumi, Jesu Tofumi is looking for something totally different. You know, it's I, no, 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 no. I'm in club, for example, you know, hanging out with my guys. It's three o'clock in the morning. Everybody is high. You know, we're all excited. We are going home. I need a babe around that time. Can that app give me one? He doesn't want to connect his LinkedIn profile to that kind of app. I'll be to talk to me. Do you want to talk to me? Do you want to connect your LinkedIn profile to that kind of app? You know, you don't even want the babe to know that you are a fintech person. You don't want anybody because the more the babe knows that you are fintech, the more you are built. So you don't want anybody to overbill you. You see, talking to customers help you really understand what customers really want. And you might not want it. You might not really want it. You know, but remember that you are not the customer. So design thinking is an entire process that helps us to understand, you know, how to do all these things. I think Ekman's hand is up. I don't even know when. Uh, Ekman, I think your hand is up. Ekman, is your hand still up? So look at this, right? On your way to work, you find that you found the truck that is stuck under the bridge, as shown in this image. The truck was lost firmly under the bridge and the driver couldn't drive forward or reverse. Now this has caused a very bad gridlock, you know. Unfortunately, the fuel tank, the, unfortunately the fuel of the truck began to drip on the road. Last mile official, policemen, firefighter gathered to figure out a solution. What do you think they should do? If you have an answer, unmute yourself. What do you think they should do? What do you think they should do? They can try removing the tires, then dragging the truck. Who is that? Talk for me one. Removing yeah. tire, dragging the truck. That's number one. What do you think they should do? 
um, dismantle the container part of the truck. Dismantle the container part of the truck. I have you. Oh, sorry. You go. First off, you need to clear the area if the fuel is already dripping. So clear the area. Yeah. Interesting. Any other one? So I think that they should um, um, collect the fuel first in a canned um, in a canned plastic or something in a container first. Take mm. out all, all the gas first. Mm. Okay. So let's go back. What's the problem that we are trying to solve? Anybody? Gridlock. Gridlock is the problem we are trying to solve. Safety. 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 Any other person? Biggest question is why does this problem exist? Anybody? The bridge. Because the van, the truck is too big for the spot it's trying to pass through. The truck is too, is it big or high? Oh, high, sorry, high, okay. okay. High. The truck is too high. That's the problem we are trying to solve. Oh, sorry, that's the reason the problem exists. Am I correct? I think another thing is that the driver didn't see the clearance written for the reaching of his vehicle and passed through it. Okay. So now the situation we have is that the truck is stuck, right? And the reason the truck is stuck is because the truck is too high. The height is the major problem. Am I correct? Yes. 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 That's the reason the problem exists. You know. That's the reason the problem exists. If you look at a product like Piggy Vests, what problem do you think Piggy Vests is solving? Anybody? Don't, don't wait, 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 wait. I know. I know. They've come. You see them. You see them. Don't say savings problem. We know. That is what, that's the value it's offering. What is the problem? Why am I going to leave my pillow, leave my bank, leave every other platform and go and save on Piggy Vest? What is the problem that I have that Piggy Vest is helping me solve? Accountability. Mm -hmm. Account you see, accountability is the problem. The problem is that I have been saving before Piggy Vest existed. You know, it's just that I take the money when I need it. That's the problem. What is the problem that Amazon is solving? Don't say Amazon is helping us shop online. No, 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 no. Why will I go and use Amazon and not use and not just go to the store? Speed. Convenience. Speed. Convenience. You know, speed. Convenience. For some Quality. of us, you know what? Quality quality being able to check and see different options you know another problem that amazon is also solving is you know being able to help me you know to um to compare prices do you understand to compare prices another problem that amazon is solving so we've established here that the reason the stock is stuck to this bridge is because it's too high Right? Is that the is that the reason? Do you all agree that that's the reason? Yes. Okay. When we come back from break, we we'll solve the problem. Then, since we know that that's the reason, when we come back from break, we we'll solve it. Um, we go for fifteen minutes break. We come back by twelve on dots. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. Thank you for making this class interesting for us. We come back by twelve o'clock. We come back in the next fifteen minutes for those that. They are very early where they have. We come back in the next 15 minutes. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, we're waiting for all those to join back. Waiting for all those to join back. All those to join us back. Um, we are still on the design thinking principles, everybody. And then we had this, um, just quick height breaker to look at, you know, so someone had said, um, you'll break, you'll clear the environment. That was an example someone gave, clear the environment. Another person said, you know, you'll, um, what was this thing? Someone said, um you know i i can't even remember the the other stalls that we that you're going to break the top yes you know whatever you decide to do remember that the primary problem that we're trying to solve here please mute yourself the primary problem we're trying to solve is that the truck is too high am i correct that's the primary problem we are trying to solve. The truck is too high. Uh, so if you deflate the tire and it goes a little bit lower, you know, it's easy to drive it across or to drive it off that location, you know, and park it somewhere else so that other cars can easily just move on. Uh, I don't want us to spend too much time on it because it's just an icebreaker. Now, this is the design thinking process. This is the design thinking process. Um, I think there are three more people that are not in class yet. This is the design thinking process, guys. This, you start with empathize to define, to ideate, prototype and test. But if you notice, you see that this is an iteration, right? You know. So that means that normally when you're done with empathizing, you're supposed to go to define. When you're done with define, you go to ideate. After ideation, prototype. After prototype, you test. But in reality, in the product management environment, it doesn't work that way. In reality, in the PM environment, it's totally different. What usually happens in the PM environment is this. When you empathize, right? And you're done with, once you're done with empathizing, you go to define. Define helps you to understand the, empathize helps you to understand the user. Define helps you understand the problem. So in define, you are defining the problem. Now, when you get to define, sometimes you go back to the price of empathizing because you want to understand the customers a little bit more, right? And then you go back to define. And when you're done with define, you're supposed to go to ideate, right? And ideation is with a stage where we now begin to generate different possible ways of solving the problem that we've identified, right? But sometimes when you're done with ideation, while you're ideating, you might have to go back to define, to redefine the problem better. You know, and then when you get to prototype, what is prototype? Prototype is just that phase where you now create a working model of what you actually want to build. Not exactly what you want to build because not there's no stage here where you are building anything. This is not the stage where you're building, right? It is a design thinking stage. You're not building yet. But on the prototype, you would have to create something that looks like the exact thing that you want to build. You know, so that you can use that as a way to quickly generate initial feedback from potential customers and users. And then that's the process of call, that's the process that is called testing. So whatever you create as prototyping is what you are using to test. Does that make any sense to us? Anybody? Does it make any sense? Or you want me to re-explain that? 
Yes, it does. Okay, so what I'm saying is this. Empathizing is when you are trying to understand your customers. Defining is when you're trying to, you know, understand the problem. Ideation is the stage where you are generating possible potential solution to the problem that you've identified. Prototype is the stage where you are just pretty much, you know, creating something that looks like the exact solution that you want to build, not the real solution, but something that looks like what it's going to look like. And you can use that as a way to gather initial feedback. Let me show you an example of a prototype. You know, we are not in prototype yet. I'm just trying to, you know, uh, show you what this, is, this looks like so that you can understand. I was trying to build the technology products. Let me share my screen again. I think someone dropped me a message in the chat room. Okay, I would explain ideas. Okay, I would explain ideas. So when we say, when we say um, empathize, right? What we're doing in empathizing is that you're talking to customers to understand them. Right, understand them because the more of the customers, the better you understand the users, the people that would use the products. When you get to the next thing, which is called define, that's when you're saying, from everything we've gathered from all our customers, these are the different problems that we want to that we want to solve. Some customers actually want us to solve the problem of convenience. Some of them want us to solve the problem of speed accountability every customer kind of like have different you know problems that they've identified but the defined stage is when you say these are the problems that i think that we should be solving these are the ones that are worth solving does that make any sense ideation is when you are now coming together with your team to say what are the possible ways of solving the problem so for example let me give you a very, very interesting example. I had an ideation stage last two weeks or last three weeks with my team, not Utiva team, with the team of Kenta. We're trying to solve a printer problem. That's the problem I initially discussed with you about transferring of credit score from one country to another country. That's what we had discussed. But then we realized that in Nigeria, people don't take loan. You know, people have problems taking loan. People have not taken loans in the past. We did a town, all those things. How do we encourage people to take loans and convert the short loan that they take into a credit score, right? The first thing we are doing is that we are building something that's an aggregator of all the loan platforms on one single platform. So that on one single platform, Abby, on one platform, you can say you need 50,000 and then the platform connects to your bank accounts and quickly in two minutes, create what is called financial score, you know, based on your transactions, you know. So based on all the transactions you do, we can generate what is called financial score. That is not the credit score, that's a financial score. And your financial score helps you to get loan at a much more lower interest rates, you know. And then as you pay back the loan, we calculate your credit score, you know. And then that credit score, you, when you get abroad, you use the credit score to access credits to, to get you know, better credit with Experian and all these guys abroad. Now, what is the problem, exact problem that we are solving? You know, so we have to take some step back to say, what are the different problems that we've gathered from customers? Which one exactly or which ones are worth solving today? And how do we want to solve it? So the financial health score, FSH, FSH you know, is is a way that we want to solve the problem. You know, the loan app aggregator is another way you want to solve the problem. So when you get into ideation stage, what you are doing is that you're asking your team, you guys are brainstorming, using different approaches to say, what is the problem or which of these problems are we solving right now and what approach are we using to solving it? Prototype. Mm -hmm. is someone talking. Okay, prototype is not the exact product, but it's a working model of what the product will look like. So 
I worked with my team to build an example of the prototype. For example, one of the products that I wanted to build at one particular point, I will show you by just showing you the prototype, you can give me feedback. Prototype helps you to test. So creating prototype is a process. Testing is a process. But what do we use for testing on that design thinking? We use the prototype to test. Does that make sense? Does this make any sense, anybody? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, it does. You don't test at the end of building the product. Because if you start to test at the end of building the product, you have wasted resources. You've wasted resources. You've wasted, you know, energy. You've wasted time. At what stage should you be doing your first level of testing at the design thinking stage? You know, because you have not really committed a lot of resources into building the engineering and the technicality of the solution. All you have at the design thinking stage is just very simple working model, which is not the exact thing. So I wanted to build a technology platform called Jami in some, some months ago, you know, and this is the working model of what Jami looks like. You know, you want to relocate from one country to another country. All you need to do, there's no consultation fee, no company, nothing, nothing. You don't have to use agency again, where you don't have to talk to Chioma, right? Don't talk to anybody. Just come on this platform. And all you need to do is to say, what country do you want to go to? Find the country you'd like to go to here. So once you have found the country, it comes up in form of a map. You know, you can pick any continent. If you're not interested in picking continents, if you're interested in picking continents, you can pick continents. If you don't want to pick continents, you can, you can also see a list of the continents you are interested in. So if you pick one continent, it shows you the different countries in that continent. Once you pick a country that you're interested in in that continent, you know, it tells you the different visa opportunities that are available in that country. Uh, in that country. So for example, you choose England, it tells you the different visas in England that you can use to get to the UK. And all you need to do is to say, oh, I like this one. Pick one of them, Global Talent. Automatically, it shows you a video, like a course, a short guide on how to get that visa. Pay, and then you get, you get access to that content, and you watch it, you do it yourself. You don't have to pay any agents to help you do Canadian permanent resident and all these things, you can actually do them yourself because you get access to all those things. Now, I have not built those products, but with 19 people on this call, I can quickly get initial feedback with just this prototype. This is a prototype. This is not a real solution yet. This has not been built. You know, so it is the feedback I get from you you know, when I'm showing you the prototype that I will now take back to my developers and my engineers and say, hey, based on my conversation with these guys, this is what they say. I think someone's hand was up. Who is that? Yeah, by all. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been, I've been kind of, I mean, I've been raised on my hand for a very long time, I mean, but yeah, oh, it's, sorry. it's kind of the world to always check so that you yeah. don't pass what I wanted to have. So I don't disturb okay. the cloud. Oh, I stopped hearing you, Bayomi. Yeah, so I'm, I mean, I say she just, I mean, take your time to look at the okay. reason of your hands. Yeah, okay. Do you want to ask a question now? I think you passed that stage and oh, okay. I already lost it. I already lost it there. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Sorry, because I would always check uh, as we move on. So the design thinking phase is about five stages, right? Remember those five stages. The first stage is yeah. empathize, mute yourself, please. The second stage is define. The third stage is ideate. The fourth stage is prototype. The fifth stage is test. And I'd say that prototype is not the real thing. It's just a working model of what you want to build. You now use that prototype to test. So we are starting the class with the first one, which is called empathize. What does it mean to empathize? Anybody? What does it mean to empathize? Anyone? 
What does empathy mean? To feel somebody. To feel someone. To understand the user. Anybody? P putting yourself in someone's shoes. Putting yourself in someone's shoes. That is what it really means to empathize. Empathy is about putting yourself in another person's shoes. You know, trying to understand users, right? It's beyond just research. You know, it's beyond just research. It's you getting out of your convenience, you know, to put yourself in their shoes, to live in their reality, to understand what they feel, to understand why they think that way. Do you understand? If you watch a movie, and the actor is trying to jump from one building to another building. You would say, jump now, jump now. It's not just to jump. If you watch a movie and the actor is running and wants to leave his girlfriend behind, you would say, leave him now and quickly move. Why are they doing love when there's war? You know, but if you have never been there, you would never understand what it feels like, what it means. You know, empathy is about putting yourself in other people's shoes. You know, you need to have conversations. You need to talk to the potential users. You need to be with them. You need to have discussion with them. You know, so the stage of empathy is a very, very important stage, right? And talking to users is difficult and can make things go from bad to worse if you don't do it properly. And that's why we are here, you know, because if you don't understand how to empathize well, you know, you might be sympathizing. Who can tell us the difference between empathy and sympathy? Anybody? Please unmute yourself and anybody can tell us. The difference between empathy and sympathy. Anyone? Sympathy empathy is feeling sorry. Say that again. Sympathy is feeling sorry. Good. How about empathy? Empathy is feeling, feeling the same thing that you user will be feeling in terms of uh, what action, in terms of reaction to something. Good. 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 Empathy is putting yourself in people's shoes so that you can understand them and build a solution to solve the problem that you want to solve. Sympathy is feeling pity and feeling sorry for people. Nobody wants you, don't let me say nobody, most people wouldn't want you to sympathize for them. You know, I've seen empathy gone wrong, become sympathy, and customers or potential users now refuse to tell you how they feel really, you know. So the price of empathizing is a very important one. There's a video I really want you to watch, you know, and I am going to play the video, but unfortunately it's not playing on my screen. So just give me one minute. As I said, we need to come on Zoom because Zoom makes this whole thing easier for us. Okay, give me a minute, please. One minute. So thanks, sir. Uh, sorry.
Abayomi, your hand is off. Up. Do you want to ask a question? Sorry, I forgot to. I didn't hear you. I mean, I forgot to drop my hand the other time I used okay. it. Okay, okay, cool. So there is something now we are still on empathizing. There's something that is called the mom's tests, right? The mom's test is one of the tests that I want us to start with when it comes to empathizing. Um, I'm going to reshare my screen and I hope that you guys can see my screen here. Can somebody please give me a quick feedback if you can see my screen? Can you see my screen, guys? Yeah. Yes. You can see the mom's yes. test, right? Can you see the mom's test? Correct. Thank you. We're told, don't ask your mum if your business idea is a good one. She'll just say yes, because she loves you, of course. We're told, don't ask your mum if your business idea is a good one. She'll just say yes, because she loves you, of course. The mum test is a set of simple rules for crafting good questions that even your mum can't lie to you about. Let's have two conversations and see what we can learn. Mum, I've got a business idea. Can I tell you about it? Of course, dear. You like your iPad, right? Do you use it a lot? Yes. OK. So would you ever buy an app which was like a cookbook for your iPad? Hmm. And it only costs £20. That's cheaper than your hardbacks on the shelf. Well... And you can share recipes with your friends. And there's an iPhone app which is your shopping list. And videos of that celebrity chef you love. Yes, dear. That sounds amazing. £20 is fine. Will it have pictures of the recipes? Yes, definitely. Thanks, Mum. I'm going to quit my job and put all my savings into my new start-up. Won't you have some lasagna? That conversation led us down the garden path. The mum test is about talking to your customers about their life, not your idea. It's about discussing specifics in the past instead of generics or opinions about the future. It's about talking less and listening more. Let's do it again right this time. Hey, Mum. How's the new iPad? Oh, I love it. I use it every day. What do you usually do on it? Oh, you know, read the news, play Sudoku, catch up with my friends. What's the last thing you did on it? My well, Dad and I are off on holiday. I was looking where to stay. Did you use an app for that? No. I just, I just used did. Google. Alice. What Joa. app should I use? How did Don't you worry. find out about the other apps you have? The Sunday paper has a section on the apps of the week. Makes sense. By the way, I saw a couple of new cookbooks on the shelf. Where did those come from? Oh, they're one of those things you just end up getting at Christmas. I think Doreen gave me that one. Haven't even opened it. As if I need another lasagna recipe at my age. Hmm, time to refine my idea. We discovered many insights in that conversation to help us adjust our idea. It just goes to show... If you can get useful business information from mum, you can get it from anyone. The mum test. Oh, oh, oh. So we are still on the ideation stage, guys. And the mum's test is one of the ways you gather information from customers. Now, who can tell me what are the key points that you got from this mom's test? Anybody? Try to listen more than you talk. Listen more than you talk? Yes. Number one. 
Abhi, you wanted to say something? Yeah, probe more. Ask probe probing more. questions. Yeah. Ask probing questions. Mm -hmm. Any other person? I think um, you should um, have the conversation as natural as possible so the person doesn't feel pressured. Let mm -hmm. it be much more organic. Yeah. Ask, have conversations about the user's life, not about the idea. Don't ever touch on the idea. Don't ever talk about the idea. Don't ever talk about the product you're building. Don't say, oh, I'm trying to build an app that will do this. Don't. Don't talk about the products. Don't talk about engineering. Just talk about the user's life. You know, another thing is this. Don't ask a yes or no answer, a question. You know, don't ask a yes or no question. Instead of, instead of asking questions like what this lady asked, do you like your iPad? What are you expecting really from, from her to say, no, I'm going to throw it away. No, ask an open-ended question like, how often do you use your iPad? Because how often you use your iPad will tell us if she likes it or not, you know? So don't ask suggestive questions. There's some questions that are quite very suggestive. You know, you have already suggested the answer to them. You know, let's see the question she asked that was suggestive. We're told, don't ask your mum if your business idea is a good one. She'll just say yes, because she loves you, of course. The mum test is a set of simple rules for crafting good questions that even your mum can't lie to you about. Let's have two conversations and see what we can learn. Mum, I've got a business idea. You see, number one is that you've already suggested I've got a business idea. So she knows that it's about business and then she wants to protect you. You know, uh. she, wants to, she wants to tell you what you should hear. Don't say, oh, I'm trying to build a solution. You know, I'm trying to build a mobile app. Let me give you a very interesting example. If you're talking to institutional leaders about something, you know, if you come to me and you say, hey, I'm trying to build an education technology startup in the learning space for adults. And I thought I should have a conversation with you about a few things. You've already given me that it's an idea. The real answers I won't give you because you're already gonna, you want to be my competitor. You understand? I won't give you the real answers. Real deep answers I won't give you. But they tell you, you're doing an amazing job. You know, an amazing job is a very fantastic one. I've watched you for the past two years. I'm wondering if you have that minute so that we can just have a cheap chat. There's some things I would like to learn about what it means to be an entrepreneur, you know, especially the work that you've done, you know, and maybe there's a point of convergence and relationship in the future. Good. You know, I come to that meeting with an open mind, you know. Don't come and say, I've got a business idea. If it's a business idea, the cost of the customer or the user you're talking to in his or her mind will be boxed within the business space. Hmm. And you don't want that situation. The second thing you hear here... Can I tell you about it? Of course, dear. You like your iPad, right? You like your iPad, right? Of course, the mom is going to say, yes, I do. You know, don't... Be, don't... Um, don't do a yes or no question. Don't box your potential customers or your users. Do you use it a lot? Do you use it a lot? That is suggestive. Do you understand? That's you suggesting that the person should say, yes, of course, I use it a lot. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. So would you ever buy an app which was like a cookbook for your iPad? You see? You're already suggesting, you're already saying, this is what I want to build. You know, that's a failed test. So in the oh. test, talk about the user's life, not your idea. Ask oh. specifics of the past. 
specifics of the past, right? Instead of generic or opinion about the future, don't say, will you do this thing in the future? Nah, 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 nah. You know, what do you do today is what you should be knowing, what you should be asking. You know, what do you do today? You know, um, you know, how is your business striving? How's your business doing? You know, oh, we are doing it. How many locations are you guys in now? Oh, I'm amazed. You're just trying to ask questions about the past, not about the future, not how they will use a product. Because mm. then people can be defensive, mm. right? And be defensive. If you ask me about something about the past, you know, it's my past. It's what I do. I can't be defensive about it, but that's what I do. But if you ask me, will I do something in the future? You know, mm. nobody knows what they're ever going to do in the future anyway. So why are you asking? You know, our attitudes change, you know, but what predetermines our, what determines our attitude will change is how we have been engaging in the past. The last one is this, you need to talk less and listen. more. When you find yourself talking more, right, then you're already failing the mom's tests. Does that make sense? Right? We're told. The mom's tests. Okay. So what we are going to do is this. I mean, I usually give an assignment on the mom's test. What the first assignment is this, right? So there are a bunch of assignments you guys are going to have, but the first one is this. You're supposed to find the customer for a problem that you want to solve. You know, find, the, find someone and sit down with the person and conduct the mom's test with the person. My last class, this class will not disappoint me. I know that. You know, I know you guys are going to do it. What you're supposed to do is this. Find a problem that you think technology can solve. Whatever problem it is, you know, just find one. Do you understand? That you think technology can solve. And once you find one, you know, sit down with someone and say, hey, I want to have a conversation with you about this you know, and then conduct the mom's test with that person. You know, conduct the mom's test with that person. Uh, I'm trying to find, you know, give me a minute. Okay, so my, my last student actually worked on this and I really want you guys to also do the same thing. So let me show you an example of something that someone actually worked on which I think might be very helpful. So it's a manual's video. Let me see. Good. Good. It might help you to also, you know, do yours well. This was one of the previous students. Okay. Hi. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Hi, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Um, you're supposed you are supposed to also record it like this you know find the problem whatever problem you want to solve oh i want to solve the problem of you know um brt bosses you know not knowing the right place to stop i want to solve the problem of you know bag bureau collecting whatever problem you want to solve just so just well, find the customer a potential customer you can talk to and have a conversation with that customer let's do a one minute on this guy and pin out some of the errors that we see, because it's easy to pin out error, right? Um, I would like to ask you some questions, and please know that I'm recording this video with your permission. Am I able to? Yeah. All right, cool. So I would like to ask you. Sorry, can you guys still hear the sound? No, not anymore. Okay, I just want, at, at the time I was playing it, were you guys listening? Were you guys, did you guys hear it? Yes, I could hear. Yes, it. but with some back yes. question, and then just give me your honest opinion about it. So, are you aware about uh, the new banks in Nigeria? Uh, new banks, like I mean, oh, um, new NEO banks. Uh, okay. What are okay, new banks? These are the new generation. Yeah, they are regarded as the James banks, banks for the Gen Z. Okay. Yeah. So like, like they like that. 
Well, personally, I used to that from oh, cool. the new bank. I used to that and banking has never been so easy. Like, oh my god, I thank God every day for technology. So, <laughs> like, I don't know how they used to do it. I, I know the network war isn't good, but how do you, how, I mean, from the little things that you heard. What's the first thing you want to correct about this? Anybody? Yes, Abdul Samad. So I think he asked the yes or no question from the beginning. Number one, yeah. Thank you. That's 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 it. That, that's one major thing. Uh -huh. Any other person? The questioning technique. What is wrong with the questioning technique, Rafias? Okay, let's see if we can play one more. <laughs> Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you for sharing your time with me this morning. Oh, how's it going? Uh, very well, thank you. How about you? How about thank you? So, uh, could you please describe your typical day? How your day goes typically? It's basically uh, oh, the next I hope you can hear me. Uh, yes, I can. Okay. So it can be a so, two bit more audible. That will be fine. Okay, that won't be a problem. So I said because of the nature of my job and uh, the, my current uh, crash material, let me just say, uh, I feel it's quite strenuous as but because of I love what I do as a job, so that kind of like make just like the better part of the day. But going out, going to work and coming back from work uh, during the day is usually like not a very good experience on a daily basis. Okay, so it can be tired. Yeah, apparently it's Okay, sorry about that. And so, what do you do when you are tired to get over the stress or to relieve yourself of the stress? Basically, I speak with my family. Like, when we are together, when I talk, when there is one, when we make jokes, when we recall them past experiences, laugh about things together. That majorly reduces my stress level. It helps me okay. next day. Ah. What what do you think she is doing right and what do you think she's doing wrong? Anybody? The conversation is natural. Conversation is natural? Mm -hmm. That's what she's doing right. Well, I can't figure out what she's doing wrong. You can't figure out what she's doing wrong. I mean, okay. Any other person? I mean, I decided to show you very raw ones so that it doesn't look like a, you know, because these are the ways, these are the kind of people you guys are also going to be talking to. More open questioning techniques. Okay. Let's do one more. My name is Alex Bruna. Okay, nice. Nice to meet you, Alex. Nice to meet you, Alex. So, what... What do you do? Um, I'm a voice of artist. I'm a voice of artist and uh, sometimes a model. So. That seems like a fun job. 
voice over yeah, yeah. and emojis. Sometimes, sometimes it's a fun job, sometimes it's not. But it's it's a job that gives you time to you know express so many things and do so many things and get involved in other things. So yeah, it's a fun job. Oh, lovely. Okay, so where do you stay? Where do you live now? I stay in Lagos. I stay at um, Keja, Lagos. Okay. Nice. So do you, you say you stay in Keja, Lagos. Do you work, first of I all? I can't give you my full address. If that's of course. Oh, no, I'm not asking for your full address. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not asking for your full address. Okay. When did you move to Lagos? When I moved to Lagos, that was um, 2017. I moved wow. to Lagos 2017. That was because for service, service actually brought me to Lagos. So 2017, yeah, that's when I came to Lagos. Oh, nice. So, okay, service brought you to Lagos. And when you got to Lagos, you started your voiceover artist and model um, jobs. No, no. Um, service brought me to Lagos after my service year 2018. That's when I started the modeling jobs. But after a couple of failed attempts, I know that's when I now picked up voiceover. And when I picked up voiceover, the job also kick started. So, oh, yeah. nice. That's, that's great. I'm actually happy for you. That's great. So, okay, moving to Lagos, doing your youth service. I'm very sure accommodation was not, was not great. It was not easy to come by then. How, how do ah. you manage that? <laughs> That's 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 the norm. That's the norm in Lagos. <laughs> Accommodation, ah, it was it was crazy. Ah, no, it was crazy. Uh, um, 2017, okay, 2017, 2018, I had a place because of my seventh year, I had a place already where they provided for me. So but okay. after my service in 2018, I had to get a place of my own. That was where the real the real stress started. So um I tried getting a place, I could not get a place in 2018. So I kept on trying up, up until 2019. So mm-hmm. I had so many failed attempts trying to get a place in 2018 and it was just crazy. So, but finally I got a place in 2019. Oh, well, wow. <laughs> that, that's, that's it, that's just it. That's okay. So you're able to get a place in 2018 after going through stress. In 2019. Okay, 2019, okay. sorry. Yes. I'm going through a lot of stress. stress. What, what's stress? What's the stress? What does the stress into? I just want to know, like, what exactly? Okay. Okay. Off the top of my head, I can give you two experienced encounter that was in um, 20. How do you think the conversation is going? Natural. She's... Natural? Yeah. Any other person? What do you think? Is is driving him to talk about the problem. Driving him to talk about the problem. I love that. You know. Uh, Ada, please. Ada, your hand is up. Oh, sorry. I had to unmute. Yeah, I feel she asked um a leading question when she said, oh, was it stressful when you yeah. tried to get accommodation in Lagos? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that is the, yeah, 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 you're, you're absolutely correct. And that's the power of preparation. You need to prepare. You can't just get into the conversation without preparing. How will you construct the question that it doesn't look like it's leading? You know, uh, tell me about the experience when you were trying to get an accommodation in Lagos, you know person tells you um how was your ex what was what was your experience like you know when you were trying to get um accommodation in lagos um you can't ask questions like was it stressful because now you're already suggesting you know of course the person will tell you it was stressful you know anything in this world and that's why journalism is very interesting because if you ask anybody suggestive question like do you like nigeria you know you've already said like in the convert in the question everybody will tell you no you understand because it's already suggestive you know even someone who has never been attacked before who has never been robbed before will tell you you know everything bad about nigeria because you're already suggestive so please avoid suggestive questions 
you know, so that you just don't preempt, you know, your um your um your potential customer. So what you are going to do, all of you, you're going to do this individually, and then you're going to record it. You have to record it, be live on the screen, you know, ask questions, talk about, you know, whatever you want to talk about, and make sure that you're doing the mom's test. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, give me a minute. So why? Yeah, please. Yeah, so for the mom testing, right? Um, do you have like a document that we could go to, just like the YouTube video you actually shared, just to get more knowledge about it and how we can, I mean, how we can proceed with it? Do you understand what I mean? No, no I don't have any documents. It's quite a very experiential thing. Okay. It's more experiential than more documented. It's it's a conversation, but and then there are guiding principles for that for that conversation, which was what I had given, you know. Number one guiding principle is talk about the user's life, you know, not your idea. Have a conversation about the life of the user. Um, number two is ask about specifics of the past instead of generic or opinions about the future then talk less and listen more. You know, as a product manager, you, you will do a lot of talking to customers. You know, um, when you're talking to customers like that, it's, a, it's an experience. It's a conversation. Have it the normal, I mean, you've seen three videos that some of the folks add. It's, it's a normal day-to-day -day conversation that you have. But just avoid the fact that, avoid talking about a business or an idea or a technology. Ask much more specifics about the past. The most, most specifics about the past that you ask, the more interesting and you know, exciting it is for the, for the potential customer or the user you know, to engage with you and be happy to share. You know, because you're saying, Absalam, what, what does it look like? What does it mean to live in Kaduna? You know, on a Saturday evening, what do you do? You know, on a Sunday evening, what do you do in Kaduna? You know, um, just ask specific questions about the past. You know, don't be suggestive and don't do a yes or no question. We're going to get into a breakout room, pick any subject, everybody, and do a very quick five minute mom test. One person will be the person asking, the other person will be the potential user. You know, five minutes, no more than five minutes because our time is fast spent. You know, don't stay more than five minutes there and you come back here where we'll do uh, a very quick initial assessment. Sorry, don't know what's going on. But... Okay. I'll do a breakout room. Um, we have... 19 people, let's say 18 people on the call, I will do a room for nine persons, which automatically assign you to the breakout room. You will get someone, just ask the person questions, you know, like a mom's test, and then we'll come back and quickly do a review. Let's do three break three people in the breakout room. We'll do a room for six people, a six breakout room, so that one person will be an observer. Does that make sense? One person will be an observer. The other person will be the person asking the question. The person, will, the other person will be the person answering the question. We'll come back quickly. Please go into the breakout room. Select the room you are prompted to go into. Okmolan, Ekpen, are you guys in this meeting?
Yes, we are back into the room. Oh my god. Oh my god. That, that was that was <laughs> How was it guys? How was it? Oh god, it was nice. That was a tough one. <laughs> awesome. 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 So tell me what was the highlight? So can I start? Yeah, please. Yeah, so the highlight in our own was the fact that we we had to think of an idea 
in our minds before we even started asking the question, which mm -hmm. made it a little more difficult. Then trying to drive the questions, to drive the customer to talk about that problem is where the, I feel the challenge was really was really at, you know, in trying to say, okay, having a conversation, the conversation starts well, you know, we start talking about, you know, you want to try and build that scenario. Okay, we wanted to, for me, I, want, I was trying to drive the question towards using a, a employee system whereby the app just gets your coordinates in a location and knows you're at work. You don't have to go and check in or check out. But from the coordinates, the app is able to know oh, you're at work and when you're leaving, it knows you're leaving. Mm. So driving the question to that problem is where yeah. the challenge came into play. Absolutely. Yeah, so basically that's... that's I that's, get you. Yes. I get you. I get you. I get you. That that's a very interesting one. Any other person? So in our group, we did. Whoa, well, that was very brain draining. We did. We were looking for a solution that instead of standing in line to get the tickets for BRT, if we could have an app where users could load the money, load up a card and just cash. Yeah. And Rafiat was the PM and he was speaking to me. Then he, we found out that most times the pain that parents go through, sometimes the monies they give to kids to buy these tickets get missing in school. Sometimes after work, standing under the rain, standing in long queue to get the ticket and at, at, at the long run, by the time it gets to your turn, there's no ticket anymore. So we found out that it's going to be an amazing thing. He now asked if I'm willing to pay to download the app. I said, no, the cost in Nigeria is enough. You know, I'm paying for this service. Why should I have to pay? And it opened my eyes to a lot of ideas, right? You, you, can, you won't even understand the kind of things you can do till you talk about them. I found it very interesting. Or did you guys ever, in the month test, did you guys ever mention the app, mention the product? Yes, we did. We did. In the month test. Oh, no, no, he didn't. So he just asked me, what's your experience about using the BRT bus? I said, I prefer to drive in because I live in Songo. I work in the isle, on the island. And he asked me, how do I, well, how's my experience buying tickets? I made it clear to him that sometimes I close from work five o'clock, stand in queue, and sometimes I don't even get the ticket. I have to wait for the next bus to queue up again, you know. So he now asked me that are there things that, if done differently, I would I would love, you know. It was when we now came up with the idea. He never mentioned the app or anything. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. You are also not supposed to ask potential solution from the from the um, from the customers you're just supposed to dig deep into their lives understand the problem understand what you're doing you are empathizing that's the thing you need to remember that there's the essence of the conversation is to empathize what will be very interesting because these dynamic this arrangement is the the please mute your if you're not talking please please mute if you're not talking you saw what? Was someone saying something? Okay. So this I, environment is still not the ideal environment because remember that, you know, you, you are all product managers to be and then you're talking to someone who is a product manager. But let's see what it's going to look like when you have a conversation with someone who is a customer or who is a potential user, who is not a technical person like you. You know, who is not uh, a product manager like you who does not even know that you are doing a mom's test. You know, who is not evaluating you back. Someone you're just talking to about a potential problem or about talking to about a problem. You're trying to dig deep into the person's life and let's see what it's going to look like. So you're supposed to find someone, talk to the person, record it. And next week, Saturday is when we are going to listen to it. But class again is by tomorrow, you know. But by next week, Saturday, we're going to listen to whatever recording you do you know, before, between today and next week, Saturday, you get one done. But today, you know, uh, sorry, tomorrow, there's another class by one o'clock. Hope you guys know that. And then we'll move on from here tomorrow. Thank you so much.
Um, this is where we're going to call it a day. Any question before we round up? Abdul Samad, go ahead, please. Your hand is up, Abdul Samad. Yes. Can you hear me now, sir? Yes, please. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, like I said, the challenge we had was trying to drive the customer to talk about the problem we're trying to solve. Mm -hmm. Is there any any format or way we can we can or model we can get that to to the way we will ask the questions? I don't know how to put it exactly. Yeah, that is where the problem is, Abusama, because the goal is not to do this to drive towards any solution. Yes. The goal is to just dig deep into the customer's life. So that he talks, talks about right. it. You see, if this is done well, leave the product that you have in mind. You know, the goal is just to explore and continue to explore into the life of the customer. If it's done well, the customer will lead you. Don't lead the customer. Let the customer lead you to their life, their experience, you know, and then you will find the customer because you're trying to solve the customer's problem. And you are assuming that you know them before you even get into the conversation. The assumption should be, I don't know anything about the customer's problem. I'm here to find out. And whatever I come up with here will not determine the product or whatever I build, not the other way. Not that I have something in mind I want to build. And then I'm trying to create and frame the question so that the customer is talking to me about whatever they want to do. You know, thank you. Yeah, I think no customers don't lead the customers on for having any product. You're not talking about products. When it, when when customers start telling you about products, you are failed the mom's test. You are only asking the customers specific about their pasts. You know, you know specifics about their past. How do they do things? No product, no product conversation at all. Chinelo, please. Thanks for the opportunity. I want to ask a bigger, like to have a bigger picture and a bigger goal. Before I joined this class, I took my time to understudy you and read a lot of things about you and what you have done. Now Myself. I want to ask, yeah, yeah, you <laughs> on Facebook, everywhere, to LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, and the progress you have made and the brand you tiva. And I want to find out. I understand that product management means it's like a white space, like a white house. It means different things to different environments, to different companies. And I want to find out what, you know, I have read that to be a good product manager, you have to know data analytics. What's your take on it? How do we, because the whole game, um, the whole outcome of these things is after the studying, you pride yourself with, oh, my students are in this place and that place, and I have seen that, right? What's your take about data analysis? What what kind of, what like I've seen mixed panel, I've seen a lot of data analytics tools. What tools and techniques do you think we need to be good product managers? And how do we, do we learn them in this class? How do we, how, I don't know, how do we get them so we can move in, you know? Look, there's so much you need to know to be a product manager. Data analytics is even last on the list of the things you need to know. You know, it's good if you know data analytics is good, but it's not a, it's, it won't be your first 10 things. You understand? It's not your, it's not your first number one to 10 list of things that you need to know. You understand what I mean? There are much more all gents and important tools. Everything you will learn in the data, in the product accelerator are the super all gents. Okay. You know, the tools you need to learn, the techniques, the strategies are the things that will make you a complete data handler, I'm sorry, complete product manager. But then because product management is like being a CEO, of your product, you know, learning never ends. You know, there's so many trading never ends. There's so many things you still want to know in the future, but that's not that. Those are not the minimum viable. They're not like the immediate thing you need to know. 
You can you can be you can spend first five years of your life as a product manager and never know anything about data analytics and never even do data analytics at all. You know you will analyze some you would analyze some data, but you might never get to the point where you're churning out heavy data, you're analyzing data, you're creating powerful dashboard. You might never get there. But then it's good to have the skill, you know, uh, in case. But you need to go and learn Jira. You need to go and learn Figma. You need to know how to use Sketch. You need to know how to... These are important tools you can never do without. You need to know how to write user story. You need to know how to do user boarding. You need to know how to, you know, do so many things that are important. You cannot survive without knowing how to create a product roadmap. You can't survive without knowing how to create a user story. You can never survive without a mom's test. Those ones are urgent. You can never survive without a storyboard. You can never survive without knowing how to use Figma. Those ones are important. But data analytics is like too far. Okay. You know. So what I would say is that put your mind on the super important, you know, ones. And they are the ones you will learn, you know, in the um in the you in the day in the product accelerator. Um, then one year later. If you choose and say, oh, I want to really, really be a leader in my space. I want to, you know, be better. You can now say, oh, let me take some more skills in data analytics. Um, but, you know, data analytics will come. That will come at the right time. But product management, the core of product management is what we should focus on right now. And that's what would help you, you know, do well in the product management space, you know, um, not just the... You know, the other, uh, there's some tools I call addendum. I will put data analytics as an addendum. You know, it, it's a good, I'm not saying it's not good. I'm just saying that you will still do the first three years of your career without really being a heavy data analyst. You wouldn't, you, you, you won't be a heavy data analyst. You might take, you know, 500, you know, sample data that you gathered from talking to customers and, you know, analyze them mildly using Excel. But to now say you want to go and be a data analyst and, you know, as you grow in that space, you might have to invest more in, on that. Um, yeah, thank you for, yeah, thank you for this. Um, so I have a question, right? I mean, the other time you were talking about prototype, uh, you <laughs> showed us a kind of sample of a prototype, yeah? <laughs> uh, I mean, I think you logged on into Figma the likes and the sample you showed us, um, actually, I mean, I see it more like a web kind of design. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sample of hacks. I mean, on that Figma, right, is it possible that you design something for an application to as well then? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. it's possible. So if you, I mean, you will have to learn to use Figma. That is important. You know, that is important. So, I mean, Figma is what we use for many of our students. You know, um, Figma is what we use for many of our students. And our students actually design, um, you know, using Figma a lot. I mean, many of our students, when they come to um, the product design class, they use it to design an app. I mean, I was just, um, this might not be a perfect example, but this is an example of a student's design. I just quickly had to search on Twitter because... I know our students on design used to go on Twitter to, this was March 21, one of our students just designed this. So this is a design that a student just did on Figma. I couldn't see it. I didn't hear that, say that again. You can't see anything. Ah, uh, I thought I was sharing my screen. <laughs> I can see that. Can you see my screen now? Can you see my yeah, screen? I can see it. Yeah, I can see it. So this was done March 21 by a student, a FOSA, you know, designed this and then posted it on Twitter. You know, she used Figma for this. I mean. I mean, as a, as a product manager, your job is not really to design, right? Your job is not to design. You are not the designer. 
Uh, I think there's another student that designed this also. You're not the designer. There are de you will have a design person on your team. However, you need to know how to design because you know you need to be able to quickly take what your designer has designed, being able to edit it. You have a presentation to, to do. You know you don't want to be waiting for your designer to adjust a few uh, elements of the design. You need to be able to. But you would always have a designer. You know, um, you are not the product designer, you are the product manager, but you need to also know how to design. This is a design that one of our students came up. So you will be able to do, once you're done with your product design class, you'll be able to do things like this for your products. But remember that at the level of prototyping, you are not doing a very heavy design. You are doing a design that helps you to be able to test with the markets. You know, a design that you can go to someone and say, you know, I'm building this app, um, Abby, I'm building this app, and I'm wondering if you can just take one minute to look at it and see if it's something that you think makes sense. And Abby can just, okay, give me your phone, let me, and then Abby looks at it and like, okay, this sign-up button is very small, though. You know, some of us, we don't have good eyes, you know, gives you feedback immediately. And then like, oh, this bot thing that is saying pay here, eh? I don't think a customer is ready to pay yet. I think sometimes, you know, I just, I still want to see, you know, it helps you get that very early feedback. Yeah, when we get to prototype, we'll talk more about prototyping. But for now, let's just stop where we are. Um, any other person, questions, please? If I may, um, okay. in our own group, right? So based on the feedback that you mentioned, we kind of like, is it, or is it normal to sometimes digress? Because yes. I realized that we, di we digressed um, yeah. We wanted to talk about why Utiva, why not product school, why not mm -hmm. product dive. Mm -hmm. But we then started with, um, tell me about yourself. You know, we just not, you know, but at the end of the day, we realized that, you know, we just began to, we didn't get on the core. Does that mm -hmm. happen a lot or was it that? Oh, we didn't do right? It's even better you digress. Because the more you digress, the more you give the, the person you're talking to. You give the person, you make the person feel at home, at ease. You see, the essence of this is to have a conversation, to learn more about your life, not about why you chose products or why you chose products Utiva. You understand? Learn more about your life. Because the more of the person's life you understand, you know, you know, the more you can now go back. Because many of the things, when we get there, you would see what I'm talking about. Some things, they call, when we get there, I don't want to preempt the, the class. Some things the customer would tell you is totally different from what they do. In reality, a customer tells you, a customer says, you're like, you're, so you're not, you're not, you're, so you ask questions like, so why, so why don't you just ask your neighbor then to give, to recommend someone to you? Like, ah, no, I can't just get anybody to be in my kitchen. Ah, my kitchen is my kitchen, you know. I'm very protective of my kitchen. I want my kitchen to be very, you know. But in reality, what they do is that they actually have strange people come to their homes to fix their kitchen problems, you know. So the more you, you, the more you digress and you go deep dive into their lives, the more you understand what the customer is. I think where the problem is with product managers is that we already have something in mind that we want to do. We already have answers in our minds. We are only just going through this process of talking to customers, expecting them to validate what we have in our minds. You know, that's why we are doing this. If you go into that conversation with that approach, you will get the best of it. You know, the best, the best outcome is when you expose the conversation, when you digress a little bit, when you come back to the core, when you talk about other subjects, because it allows you to understand the customer more. The goal here is to learn more about the customer. I'm not saying you now totally are digress and then you go off points and then it doesn't look like you are talking about anything again, but, you know, just create an atmosphere that allows the customers to be ready or the user to be happy to talk more with you to engage because there's so much you need to know about the user's life <clears throat> than what you think you know i mean people who build products if you're building a product for uh, one of my friends is trying to build a product for africans in diaspora and then she came to my house to come and interview me and then we talked and talked and talked we gisted and had conversation the first one hour i say i'm 33 before you can break me, you will try. 
before you can break me, you try, you want to get some deeper insight into how Africans exist. You know, if you are not part of us, we will not first give you the answer. We will still be forming for you. You need to digress and create an atmosphere that allows me to tell you in reality. I have six younger sisters at home. I'm the one paying, paying their bills. You know, my younger sisters are richer than me, but they still want to collect money from me. Before I can tell you those deeper things, you know, you need to make me feel very comfortable at ease. So it's not a five minute conversation. I know you want to do this in five minutes and then like, oh, after five minutes, you think you know everything about the customer. You're talking about people's situation. People don't just open up a lot like that. You know, don't use that three minutes video that we watch as a benchmark. Uh, um, it's not a three minute conversation. It's sometimes a 15 minutes discussion still going on and on, just exploring and learning more and then People will now start to open up and tell you the reality of what they think, how they feel. We'll get there when we move on. I'll take Moyo. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My group, I think we asked the questions well. It was just sometimes we say yes or no questions. But the mm -hmm. main question I want to ask you, I am from when I found Tiva, from when someone recommended it, and I've been checking, okay, what's the career part of a project manager? So I would like to ask, what's the career part of it? Product manager, yes, sorry. yes, sorry. What's the career part of a product manager? How do you think the person can fit? Especially in Nigeria, would you advise who oh, the person should look for careers or jobs outside Nigeria? Just that's I mean, the career part. Yeah. And the, the, the greatest opportunity is in Nigeria, out Nigeria, product managers are in Nigeria working with international organizations. Product managers are abroad working with a local organization. It depends on how skillful and how good you are, how you immerse yourself into learning. Uh, one thing I will tell you for free is this. If you're a junior, you can start as a product associate, right? And then you become a product manager. Or there's another thing that is called product owner. So we have product associate, product owner, product manager, vice president product, product director, and that's how the career path, you know, moves, you know. But the interesting thing is people have done a, a different things. I've seen people who have gone through Utiva's program and they've gone to become product associates. You know, one of our students most recent that reached out to me works with you learning as a product associate. The, in that same class, you know, another person went on to become a product manager at Temai. You know, another person went on to go and become a senior product manager because what made that person senior is the fact that the person was actually coming from a background in the banking and banking industry, but had not done product management before, was a software engineer. You know, so the person just moved from becoming a senior product manager, you know, and then became a senior product manager at Mono. So we have people moving on a different, you know, career path. You know, but what I always tell our students is that there's eventually going to be a point of convergence. The point of convergence is based on your skill. If you are good, it doesn't matter how you start. You know, you will accelerate if you are good. I know. I remember Uchena, for example. Uchena was with was a customer success, customer service person when she joined Utiva. She moved from working with us to uh, move from learning at Utiva to go and join Yata as a product uh, manager. But she was not really leading as a product manager, and then moved on to go and join Get Equity as a senior product manager now. You know, in tech, senior role is not based on years of experience. In tech, it's based on the number of projects that you've worked on, the complexity of environment, the way you have worked, you know, how many teams have you led and co. I think one of our students reached out to me last week, was it last week or this week, Ucheria. Uh, yeah, Ucheria reached out to me, I think it was, um, one day ago where she was saying, you know, she, she had not even completed her training. I, I, I left their class two weeks ago and I was following up with her about her learning experience. You know, that's how I follow up with every student. And she's like, hey, let me share a bit of good news. Design thinking classes were really awesome. Just after two classes, it was all, it was as if I'd gotten all I needed to move on. I applied to a head that's for banking in another financial institution. I used the mom's tests assignments to prepare my proposition, it hired by special grace of God, I got the job. I've done the medical field. So people are moving to different things. I mean, she moved to work with an head of banking, the head diaspora banking. I think they were building a technology product for diaspora banking. And, you know, she moved on to, go, to get another new job. 
So people are moving at different things. That what the, what the typical career path is, you go from associate to product owner, to product owner, to product manager, from product manager to senior product manager, to VP, to product director. That's usually like the path. But then people move to product director within four years. Depends on the complexity of the product, that the challenge that you take onto yourself. That's what it depends on. Does that make Would sense? Would you advise to write the certification exam immediately we're done? Those are a waste of time. Nobody, nobody ever in this industry would ever quote me anywhere would ever ask you for certification. It's just a Nigerian thing. People are just certification, you know, boxed. They're talking about product management, tech skills, nobody. But if you have some extra money you want to spend, you know, go ahead and do it. But nobody would ever ask you. Nobody wants to hire a product manager and say, show me your certification. Where? This is not project management. This is not PMP. <laughs> this is product management. Nobody ever has for certificate. If you're good, what they do is to see how many products have you worked on before. You know, that's what they want to know. How many products have you worked on? Have you bled it in? So that's what you should be aspiring to do. Get on teams, work with the mentors, build, get your own product out there. That, oh, I was a part of this. I was a part of that. You know, even if it's not a complete product that became a unicorn or that got launched, at least you can say, hey, I worked on this product. And then you are able to frame examples of all situations that happen, scenarios based on where you say you're coming from. That's how to start the journey as a product manager. That's what I will spend my time doing, not any form of certification. Nobody would even ask you for anything. That's just a, you know, it's because people, some people know Nigerian, so we are very certification, okay. Let's have certificate to the conversation. You know, people will be excited about it because I mean, but nobody asks you for certification. This is where we're going to close today. Uh, I'd have loved us to go more and more, but we meet tomorrow again where we'll do a lead a lot more deeper dive than what we have done today. Have a beautiful time, guys. Bye bye.